<laughs> E3 is always an extremely exciting time. It's the time that we hear about a bunch of new video games coming out, a bunch of new developments, a bunch of new things in the world of gaming. And we get to be really excited and collectively come together in nerdgasm over all the really cool, exciting things that are coming in the next year, or if you're Sony, the things that are coming in the next seven years. And I already talked about my Nintendo impressions and everything that I thought about the Nintendo event and the fact that it was just one big switchgasm for me. That's the second orgasm joke I've done in the space of about 10 seconds, so let's stop there. Surprisingly enough, in this list of 10 things that I'm excited for, only two of the things are Nintendo related. So what are the other eight you're asking? Are they Sony? Are they Microsoft? Are they Ubisoft? Are they Bethesda? Yes. Let's dive into this list of top 10 things that I, that I uh, jizzed in my pants for. Three. Three jokes now about orgasms at E3. This list is in no particular order, it's just things that made me very, very excited, very, very moist. <laughs> I gotta stop. Coming in at number 10, Spider-Mans. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan in general, both the character, the, the movies, the icon, the thing that is Spider-Man and his video games. I've loved so many Spider-Man video games, however, I stopped being obsessed with them after Spider-Man 2. And we all know how, if you played Spider-Man games, how fantastic Spider-Man 2 the game was. Yeah, mostly the reason for that, there's a lot of things that went into it, but you know, when you web sling, the left trigger and the right trigger, you know, you just certain hands. And there was something that for some reason just went away. They tried to simplify it over the years and it just kind of got kind of boring. And they tried to streamline it as much as possible and it really took the fun out of it. When I heard Insomniac Games was making a new Spider-Man game, I was really, really uh, hopeful. And just this trailer, it was just everything that I wanted Spider-Man to be. It borrowed so many elements from Batman and a few Spider-Man games that were halfway decent and combined it with what looked like Spider-Man 2 mechanics but upgraded for a 2017 or 18 feel. It just it just looks very promising, very exciting. A Spider-Man game done properly, guys, is an amazing game. For those of you who didn't play the older Spider-Man games and only played newer ones or just haven't played them in general and can't conceive how exciting a Spider-Man game will be, I spent countless hours as a kid swinging through the city of New York, just swinging, not playing the game, not doing anything other than just swinging through Central Park and over the cities and around and... I really hope that it is how I'm hoping it's gonna be, but the trailer definitely excited me. So that's number 10. Number nine is Life is Strange, the prequels, because I, I really, I fell in love with that game very recently. It was sometime in the last six months that I discovered Life is Strange and, and went on a journey with it. And it just, it was a game that had me thinking about it for months and months after. I just couldn't stop thinking about it. It was, I, I wanted to play it again as soon as I finished. I never did because I moved on to other things, but it was, a, it was a game that definitely stuck with me. And it was a game that I really, really, really enjoyed and I never thought there'd be a sequel I just didn't think there'd be enough interest in it I didn't really even do much research into if there was one coming and then when I saw there was a prequel coming it definitely told me right away that it's something that could have a sequel eventually and I don't know if that again I don't know if they've announced a sequel but it was definitely something that super excited me that I got to play more of this world you play as Chloe in this one and you don't have the rewind abilities actions actually will have consequences and you can't go back and try redoing something else which I do like but I'm just excited to play more Life is Strange because that was a really great game and if you didn't play it it's super cheap like 10 15 bucks go pick it up check it out i'm excited for that next up we have a shadow of the colossus remake now i'm excited for this uh probably for a different reason than most people and that's that for some reason for whatever reason i never played the the original shadow of the colossus and it's something that i knew i missed out on and i've i've bought it i have it on playstation 2 i keep meaning to pick up the the remastered hd uh whatever it's called for the playstation 3 and play that but i just never got around to it i never got around to buying it. I never got around to playing it. Hearing about the remake instantly got me excited. Yeah, I can finally play this game. I have an excuse to play it. I don't know if they announced the date for it, but I'm definitely excited for that. Coming in number seven, we have Dragon Ball Fighter Z. The last time there was an actual Dragon Ball fighting game was on Xbox 360. I think it may have been on PS3 as well. And I can't remember offhand what it was called, but I'll show it here on the screen. And it was a really, really fun fighting game. An actual, like, just almost 2D kind of fighting game. Not like the 3D crazy ones that have been coming out lately, which a lot of them are really fun. I actually really enjoyed the Raging Blast games. This is definitely going back to that old school way of, you know, a 2D style fighter. It looks like it has some 3D depth to it you can use three different characters at once so it kind of is like a mix of like ultimate marvel vs capcom mixed with dragon ball the, the initial dragon ball fighting game on 360 and then there's own style and 
very fast paced, very crazy, but I'm really looking forward to it because I love Dragon Ball obviously a lot. So any addition to the series I can get behind is great. I look forward to diving into some more Dragon Ball fighting action, playing as Teen Gohan, who is my favorite character in all of Dragon Ball Z. Coming in number six, we have Kingdom Battle. There's a few reasons, and I want to do a bigger overarching video about my whole my whole love for the, the concept of this. Appreciate what Ubisoft is doing. And it does tie into why I'm excited for the game and excited for the concept of what this game does open way, open, open pathways for in the future. It's just a fun looking game in general, and it's something that I get to play in two months time, which is the most exciting part of it for me. And I've already talked about it once in my last video, so I won't go into more detail than that but the most exciting thing as I said is the fact that I get to play a new game on my switch in two months time that actually does look very enjoyable very exciting and has Mario so I'm excited for that number five now don't collectively sigh when I say this because I know I know a lot of you might be thinking and, and don't just 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 okay okay at number five, we have Assassin's Creed Origins. And the reason for that, there's a couple of things here. I am an Assassin's Creed fan. I don't know, I don't know if I feel like it gets a bad rap because it's, you know, it's been a franchise for maybe like, what, 10 years and we've already had like 12 titles and a bunch of off spins. So I get why people are sick of it being grinded into the ground. I love Assassin's Creed. I mean, I, I love a lot of the titles more than others. I mean, and the, the second one was fantastic. Brotherhood and Revelations were pretty great because they were essentially the second one and Ezio was just the best assassin ever. I really, really, really loved Black Flag. I thought that game was amazing and Rogue was really fun as well. Another game that had a really great story, but mostly because the pirate thing, I love pirates and the whole ship battle thing was pretty cool. But again, those games were really fun in general and I did really like the story of them. And there's been some in between. I actually enjoyed Unity for the most part. Not all of them are a hit. I didn't finish Syndicate because I got kind of bored of it. I felt like it was a little bit too much going on. But the other reason why I'm excited, apart from the fact that I'm a fan of the series in general, is I've always loved loved Egypt. I've always been obsessed with Egypt ever since I was a kid. I really was, I was so into like mummies and hieroglyphs, pyramids and old King Tut and shit. Like I always, whenever we went to the museum for field trips for school, it was always the Egypt area that I got most excited for. Getting to play a game, Assassin's Creed game at that in Egypt and dive more into a world like that. I'm definitely excited for it. It looks like they put a lot of, a lot more attention and love into this one. I mean, I'm pretty sure this team hasn't made a game since Black Flag and I really loved Black Flag. So they've had a few years to work on it. Hopefully it's great. My expectations aren't like super high or anything like that. It's something that excited me. So it's on this list. I'm, I am excited for the game. Next up, this one actually caught me off guard. Uh, Evil Within 2, it made me really excited. And the reason why it caught me off guard is because I bought Evil Within 1, like almost after it came out and then I never played it. I don't know why, it just sat on my shelf. It was something that I was excited to play, but it never really had that much of a grip on me. And everything I saw of the game, it was like, ah, it's okay. I'm definitely gonna play that eventually. Evil Within 2, that trailer, it just blew me away. The concept behind it, the creepiness behind it, the style behind it was just so intriguing. I was like, what am I looking at? What is this game? And then when I realized it was Evil Within 2, I was like, damn, I need to play this. Just this trailer alone has me completely sold. It looks creepier. It looks freakier. It just looks more intense. Everything about it, it has that, that that I was looking for in the first one. So now I'm actually finally playing the first one. The last couple of days I actually started it and I'm having a lot of fun with it. But the whole time I'm playing it, I'm like, let's just get through this so I can play the second one. So I'm excited for Evil Within 2. This one is honestly, maybe, probably very closely my, my, my favorite announcement from all of E3. And it's gonna be something that I feel like I'm I'm in the minority of and maybe people are gonna think that I'm weird for, but Skull and Bones, I'm really, 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 really excited for that. Like really excited for that, like beyond excited. Excited. And there's a reasons why I'll talk about it briefly, but growing up as a kid on my old PC, I was not even a kid, I was probably a young adolescent, but I, on my old PC at home, well, there was one that was Pirates of the Caribbean themed, and it was modeled off of another pirate game that I had, which was essentially, essentially be a pirate and go out on the open seas and downscaled from what we saw from Skull and Bones. But it was definitely that kind of concept of being the best pirate you can be, being the best ship battle a badass pirate. I loved those games, that, that whole concept of a pirate game with ship battling just went away and you didn't really get it we didn't really have anything like that that i know of at least not in the mainstream scene and then they announced assassin's creed black flag and i saw that you could do the ship battles and instantly i was sold and it was my favorite part of the game by far i was really hoping they would take that mechanic and do something with it because they spent so much time building this mechanic to then just 
move on with the Assassin's Creed series and just kind of leave this awesome pirate mechanic behind. So I was really hoping they were doing something like this and here it is, Skull and Bones, and you can actually be a pirate and you can play online and you can battle with friends or you can battle other people and you can you can be a pirate. You can try and be a captain. You can try and build a fleet and then call it. I love pirates too, Egypt and pirates. They're one of my things growing up and I love, I love this concept and I'm so excited for it. I'm definitely gonna pick it up. I really hope that it's great. It looks great, but I wanna be the best pirate I can be. If you get that game and you wanna play with me and you wanna be on my crew, in fact, I'm gonna build a crew. I'm gonna be the pirate goddamn captain, okay? You wanna be on my crew? Get the game and I'll add you on, I guess, PlayStation, whatever I end up getting it on. And the second coolest thing, like this is kind of this is kind of a cop out and I'm, I'm aware of that. Everything Nintendo from the E3 event, right? The, the, the reason why I'm putting that on this list is this is the top 10 things that excite me from E3. The top 10 things that got me like all amped up and ready to go. And just the fact that the, the whole Nintendo event sold me on the Switch even more so, told me that it was the, that I did the right thing by backing this. All aboard the Switch train, essentially it just told me that the, the Switch is going to be successful, which is such an exciting thing for me. It's such an exciting moment. If you want to see more about what I feel about that whole event and, uh, and why it excited me so much and why I feel like it made the Switch solidify itself as a successful system, both now and in the future, there's a link in the description and a link at the end of this video to a video that I already made about it on this channel. So I won't talk about that anymore. But before we get to the first number one thing that I'm sure if everyone has been subscribed for more than a week, you'll already know what it is. I want to do some special mentions of other things that excited me that didn't make the top 10 list, but there's about 12 other things I'm quickly going to mention that I'm actually looking forward to a lot. Link in Skyrim, that whole like Skyrim motion controls thing, that was really exciting. I haven't actually played Skyrim before. <gasps> I know, it's, I'm weird, okay? Super Lucky's Tale, like a very interesting sort of old school like Banjo Kazooie type, ukulele type game, which I'm really excited to check out because, you know, old school retro gamer. It looked really fun. I'm excited to play that and see what it's like. Middle Earth 2, I'm ex so excited for that. I love the first one and everything they've implemented into the second one looks really cool. Anthem looked really, really interesting. Now I'm staying reserved because we haven't seen much at all, but it does look really cool. It looks very Destiny-ish and uh, I, I don't know, I think it's going to be an awesome game. It looks it looks great, so let's, let's keep our hopes up. A new Uncharted game. I didn't think we'd get any more Uncharted, but we have a new one. It looks very Tomb Raider-ish now that you're playing as Chloe, I'm pretty sure, from like the third game, so that's interesting. I didn't think there's going to be any more. Detroit. The trailers just aren't exciting me at all. Like both trailers we've seen of Detroit becoming human or whatever it's called, neither of them looked very exciting. And it's a shame because I love Heavy Rain and I love uh, Beyond Two Souls, both very fantastic games. So I have my hopes up. I'm gonna buy this game immediately. I'm gonna play it immediately and I hope I enjoy it. Trailers just, I don't know, it's not selling me on it. Days Gone looked very, very intriguing. I'm excited for that game. Nothing more I can say about that. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I'm a huge Marvel vs. Capcom fan. I have been, fam, fan, have been for a while. And this one actually has a pretty cool looking story and also seeing Rocket Raccoon with Ebony and Ivory was really badass. Beyond Good and Evil 2 was super unexpected and I'm also expecting a release date of like 2030 and it looks really really the that trailer was a really fun trailer so I'm excited for that. Uh, Wolfenstein Two. I love the first Wolfenstein game and I'm not surprised there's a sequel at all. It wasn't even in the slightest bit surprising to me, even though I hadn't heard anything about it pr prior. The first Wolfenstein game was really fun and if you haven't played it, super recommend it because that, that was just a... I didn't expect that game to be so great. That was, it was just so much better than I expected. So that's all the other things I, I powered through really quick. But the number one thing that I'm most excited for, and as you all got, you all, we all probably know, it was, it was just a 10 second splash screen of Metroid Prime 4 and I know I probably sound just like a super Nintendo Metroid fanboy right now but that's all it took for me to be super excited this year that was my favorite thing that 10 seconds of just a black screen in space that said Metroid 4 at the end I'm just glad it's happening I'm glad that I can shut up about it now because I've talked about it enough freaking times I've, I've, I've begged for it enough freaking time at least it's happening it's this is somewhere down the road at least they are acknowledging that Metroid exists so having that and then having Metroid Return of Samus on 3DS which is a really another really cool title just the fact that we get it's a Metroid. Where is it? Here it is. I don't know. No, 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 I ain't Metroid, man. It's just Metroid. I just love Metroid. It's just. It's just about goddamn time. What are you guys most excited for? What did you see at E3 that really got you super moist? Let me know in the, <laughs> the comment section below. Leave a like on this video. Remember to be subscribed. Touch my bell for the love of Metroid. I will see y'all in the next video. E3 was good this year. Sony's was okay. Sony's was. It was um. It was okay. Oh, and the Xbox One X. I'm actually, I'm actually somewhat excited for that. That looks like a pretty cool uh, little system. I'm definitely going to pick that up. I have the old school, like big, huge Xbox One, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get rid of that and upgrade. You know.
See ya.